Hello, this is Handyman Learning RV. In this video, I'll be upgrading the radio in my Thor Axis Vegas 25.3. I'll be installing the Kenwood DMX 7705S. This procedure should work in many different RVs. And this is how I gone about doing it. First thing you wanna do is remove the panel on top of the radio. Remove the pad and there's two screws and that panel will come right on off. On off. Okay, this is the original radio that was in the RV. I'm gonna show you how to take it out. First thing you wanna do is you pop the, this off. It's a little hard, but this will pop off. Now, if you have the tools, there's tools that slide down in here to help take it out. You might be able to use the old tools, the new, the new tools that come with the new receiver might work. But if it doesn't, this is what you can do. When you go behind the back of the stereo, if you look at the sides, you have these two indentations. What you do, now if you look at the back of the stereo, it has this indentation. So go to the back and you want to take a screwdriver and slide it up the slide and then give it a little push. Then do this exact same thing on the other side and give it a little push. And as soon as you give it a little push, as soon as you pop those, it starts to slide out. Now you go inside, you want to disconnect this harness that goes to the factory harness. Connect your USBs. This is your USB and this is the HDMI that they, when they install, they install one of these. You can just unscrew that and pull it out. Unplug the reverse and the brake wires. Unplug the video cable and unplug the antenna. Now everything's unplugged and the radio's already loose. It might be a little bit more, but the radio will pull out. Then after you, the radio will pull out, then after you get the radio pulled out, now this is still in the housing. And it should have some of, some of these little things bent. You just go in there and you bend them back down or pull back down and this will pull out. And the new, the new one from the radio is the exact same size. It will slide right on in. It's just a dumbled in radio. Now, if you go to the back of the radio, you can unplug the wire. You have a couple choices after you get this unplugged. You're gonna need this harness connector to plug into the factory harness. Now what you can do is just come down here and cut the wires. Just come, don't go all the way down, just come to about right here, halfway down, and cut the wires. Now all the wires are color coded the exact same as all radios and you would just splice them together with some butt ends or whatever and just splice them together and you can use this harness. Now what I did was I went online to Amazon and I was able to find this end. It took a little bit of research but I found the connectors. They sell it on Amazon and they also do sell it on eBay. with the pin connectors that go inside. So I took the new harness that came with the new radio and put pins on the end of them and slid them into the connector to match the original that came out. And then it's the exact same size, you just put the new frame in and bend the tabs to hold it in place tightly. Now this is the new harness that came with the new radio that I wired up and put the end on. Leave your um, reverse wire and your parking switch wire accessible to plug it in. I put little ends on them. And of course I did them opposite so you can't plug them into the wrong one. So for putting the radio in, it's easy. 
you put the frame in, holes and everything, and it comes with a little mic that I drilled a little tiny hole and ran the mic through, and it plugs right into the back of the stereo. Then it also has USBs that connect to the radio. Well, I wanted to, so I decided to take a double USB plug and put it right here. And then that, this is where I, I connect the, the phone plugs to, which are right here. There's one on each side. And I'll show you what I do with these after I get everything back to, back together. Is I'm going to connect the new harness to the factory harness. Now, just to be safe, what I'm going to do is connect it to the radio and make sure everything operates before I push it in. The radio is turning on. Okay, I'm going to finish up the setup later. I agree. Okay, that's all working. Now let's see if music works. Ah, music's not working. I need to hook up the antenna. The antenna just plugs right into the back, right into the antenna slot of the radio. Now I'll try audio mixer all. Ready to work. Front right, front left. Rear left. And it's cool. This one has just a touch screen. Okay, that side's not working, so I gotta check. There it goes. Okay, that's having a little trouble. So I know I need to check that wiring. And I can see where it's popping out. So I'm going to just loosen this up and push that wire further in. That's all there is. It just did not get seated all the way. And they're now seated all the way. Okay. okay. Now I made sure all the prongs are all the way in. That was my fault. When I put the ends on the wire and slid them in the connector, I should have made sure they all seated. I have one wire for the speaker that did not seat all the way. So when I pushed it together, it just popped out. I just had to push it back in and make sure it was seated all the way. Now it should be no problem. Make sure it snaps. There, now it snapped. Make sure it snaps. with this one to check the speakers I just hit the corners left front right front take it down right rear left rear everything's working we're good so now I'm gonna unplug it from the back of the radio I'm gonna leave it plugged into the harness now to install the radio is simple. Just take it and it will slide it right on and you'll hear it snap. There, it snapped in. That's all good. Then you go to the back, plug the radio in. Bring the antenna up, plug the antenna in. that's plugged in you have three RCAs video out front video in and this is rear video in now take the R the video in that used to go to the old radio and plug it to rear camera and now your rear camera is hooked up to your radio now these are the USBs that I'll be plugging into the radio that go right underneath the microphone that I installed. Hook up your reverse and parking brake. And 
and they are hooked up. And you can just that slides right back in and drops. I'll finish setting this up later. And that's the radio hooked up. And it comes with a trim, trim ring. You just take the trim ring, line it up. And there it snaps right on. So you have your trim on it. Now, these are wires. They go to the phone. I can just plug them right on in. And it recognizes CarPlay. Hey, car. And free disconnected because now I'm going by, you know what? By the USB. It's no longer hooked up to Bluetooth. And there's everything. That I can go to the phone, music, whatever. But now the cool thing. The cord, as you can see, these are the cords. And the cords, I made it where they slide right back on in. And you just pull them out as you need them. The same for same for the driver's side. Again, they slide right back on in. Just a little hole I drilled there. I want to hook my phone up and put it in the thing. Boom. That's it. When I'm done, I put it, put it back. And that's installing the radio. Very simple. Turn the key on. And we can go camera. There's the back camera. Now, when you put the vehicle in reverse, it'll automatically go to rear camera. And this has reverse lines that you can set up. I haven't completely set it up the reverse lines yet, but I will I'll be making the reverse line to make sure that they are the width of the RV and the length of the RV. During this, I turned the volume down, but regularly when you're driving along, the volume will stay exactly the same when you turn on the turn signals or put them in reverse. The volume does not differ. Like the old unit, the volume would stop. This one does not. When you turn on the turn signal or put it in reverse.